In this video we're going to look at square roots and cube roots and we're also going to talk a little bit about squaring and cubing. So I'm going to start by writing something down and if you were to read this you might say 5 to the power of 2. Now there's another way we can say this. We can also say 5 squared. So why can we say that? Well, let's look at what 5 to the power of 2 means. It means 5 times 5. If we look at the square below, let's say that this square has sides of length 5, 5 meters, 5 centimeters, doesn't matter which units we use. If I was to find the area of this square, I would multiply the two sides together, which is the same as saying 5 times 5, or 5 to the power of 2. And this is where the term 5 squared comes from. Now we're going to look at square roots. Now first of all, when we squared the 5, it became 5 times 5, which equals 25. So what we're going to do is we're going to find what is called the square root of 25. And basically you use the symbol which is referred to as the radical. So what does the square root of 25 mean? Well, if you were to take two numbers and multiply them together and they equaled 25, what would these two numbers be? And just to add to this, the two numbers need to be the same. The two numbers would be 5 and 5, since 5 times 5 equals 25. If that's the case, then the square root of 25 must equal 5. What you will notice is that finding the square root is the reverse of squaring. When you square 5, you get 25. When you square root 25, you get 5. We are now going to look at cubing and cube roots. So let's take a base of 2 and give it a power of 3. Cubing is when you have a power of 3. So 2 to the power of 3 is 2 times 2 times 2. And we say 2 to the power of 3. And we'll write down the other way we can say this. We can say 2 cubed. So why do we call it 2 cubed? Well, we're going to actually look at a cube below. When we label a cube, we usually only label three of the sides. We'll label them as 2, 2, and 2. And if we wanted to find the volume of this cube, you would actually multiply the three sides together, which is the same as saying 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed. Now, 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. Let's now move on to what are called cube roots. And cube roots basically will take you from your 8 back to your 2. So how do we do that? Well, we use the radical sign again, but this time we're going to put a little 3 there. The reason we put the 3 is to imply that we're looking for numbers that need to be multiplied 3 times, such that they equal 8. And once again, the 3 numbers need to be the same. So 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. Therefore, the cubed root of 8 must equal 2. Once again, we learned that cubing will take you from 2 to 8, whereas cube rooting will take you in reverse. It will take you from the 8 back to the 2. I think it would be important for us to look back at square roots. Notice that when you had a square root, you didn't have a little number next to the radical. So we had the square root of 25 equaled 5. You can actually technically put a little 2 there if you want. The little 2 meaning that what two numbers, when multiplied together, will equal 25. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, that number is 5. The reason we don't put the little 2 in is because square rooting is used very commonly and we just like to take shortcuts and not write the 2 in there. 
If there is no 2, it's implied that there is a little 2 next to it. This concludes our video introducing square roots and cube roots. Remember to read the description below for links to worksheets and booklets.